my name is Kathy Clark. I'm with Moxie Mobility Training, and I'm here today to talk to you about strategies for continued success at home. Um, my company, Moxie Mobility Training, we do uh, personal training, home modification consulting, and connecting people to community resources. My background is I'm a physical therapist assistant, um, and I'm coming to you more as a personal trainer to help you with some things that I've learned throughout my journey. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we're going to look at today, we're going to talk about what your strategies are at home. We're going to, and then I'm going to give you a few strategies and we'll talk about those. So strategy one, I love my home, but does my home love me? Strategy two, get those blue suede shoes moving. Strategy three, what's your plan? <laughs> strategy four, fall prevention, and then we're going to talk about looking forward a little bit. So this is me. Um, those are my kids and my husband on our wow. wedding day. Um, my husband's a big Disney fanatic, so we were down in Disney at the Shades of Green when we got married. But the reason I'm showing you this, um, my journey really started, um, I, my undergrad was at St. Lawrence. I started looking at sports and psychology. Uh, I did my master's at BU as, as a sports psychology. Fast forward a few years. Um, that's my mom and dad. My dad passed away um, at 67. It started my whole looking into physical therapy because he uh, had a he was in a coma for a couple years, which mm -hmm. we realized that it really kind of helped my mom out because she had nothing really in place as to what was going forward. Their wills weren't done. You know, they really didn't have a plan for if one of them got injured or disabled. Mm -hmm. um, so him being, you know, taking a couple years in a coma actually helped her get a lot of things in order. Um, however, my mom passed away, unfortunately, on my, our wedding day that day. And we realized that she had decided to redo her will and still, so didn't have the will done, didn't have all the things done. So there, there was kind of a lot of things that we had scrambled right before the wedding day to try to get things in place for her. That's a picture of my mother-in-law, and that's usually what my hair looks like in that picture. Not so much like this. <laughs> um, but uh, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law actually ended up in rehab at the same time. She because of a surgery, and he because he had been failing, which we had noticed on our wedding day when, when we were in Disney that he wasn't walking as much as he was able. We actually had to get him a scooter <coughs> because he realized when he was there that, oh, I you know, don't really do much at home and all of a sudden I'm going to walk around Disney. So fast forward, they got back, they were both in the rehab. Unfortunately, he came home on hospice and she came home unable to be alone and requiring 24-hour supervision. So. They, again, didn't have many plans in place for what if. Um, so that's kind of, from all these personal experiences, is kind of what's gotten me to this point, knowing how important having those plans are and, and what, and then with my professional experience, knowing how to get to those plans and do it in a way that's that's going to make every, you, you happy and, and safe and strong at home. Um, so I... As I was doing the physical therapy, I was getting a bit frustrated because our hands were a bit tied about how much and how long we can help people. Um, physical therapy comes in and we stay in as long as we can get our goals done and then we're out. But it was that helping people maintain, you know, long after we leave that was really kind of the problem. So that's when I started Moxie Mobility Training. But we're going to talk about strategy number one. I love my home, but does my home love me? So how do those pictures make you feel? That one's kind of messy on the right. You know, the steps are kind of worn. Right. But cute houses, right? Like at some point, yeah. these probably looked fantastic. Right. Unfortunately, something happened that the people who own these houses weren't able to take care of them the way they wanted to. And, and the one on the right especially, you can tell the love that was in that house. Flowers. I'm guessing maybe even a veteran because there's a flag still yeah. probably flying, but you know the you know they get the flowers out, but it definitely needs some repair. Like you said, the steps, the paint. Um, not sure how how well you know if those stair treads are rotted or not. You know, and then how about this one? How does this one make you feel? 
Um, the one on the left is kind of messy, isn't it? It's a bit of clutter going on there. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Huh. And how about the one on the right? No, it's roomy though, but it's, it's too much clutter. Yeah, it looks like a beautiful house, but there's just stuff everywhere, right? The other one looks kind of small. And they have a lot of stuff in <coughs> there, but it's organized it's somewhat. But there's something under this yeah, it's it's organized, but there's still so much going on. It's almost kind of hard to look at those and, and right. right, distracting. Right. So your home may be trying to send you a message. Here's a couple other examples that I wanted you to look at. So, which one do you think would be more conducive to getting around and accessing things? The one that has more space and more, less clutter. There's a lot of stuff going on the left one. You're right. The problem, though, with the one on the right, as beautiful and white as it is, a lot of the cabinets are up high. Yes. Which might be tough to ac ac yeah, access, I right? Yeah, use cabinets. Right. You need the lower ones or counter spaces, right? Right, right. Where the one on the left, um, Accessing with a wheelchair or a device might be difficult because that counter in the middle, it doesn't look like there's a lot of room to move around them, right? Right. But there is the counter space, if we clean that off, it might be a little more accessible and you don't have to move as far to get to places. Right. It might be a little more um, right. easy to get around. I do agree with the clutter. Again, it's like one of the last pictures we just talked about that it's a little cluttered. But the other thing on the one on the right, what I don't love, is that the microwave is right above the stove. Oh yeah, yeah, that's not good. So if you're having balance issues, a getting accessing that microwave is going to be super hard, and b if you have the stove on and you're trying to do the microwave, that might be a really yeah. bad bad combination, right? So where yes, you have more accessibility inside mm -hmm. the kitchen. It, but there, are, so it's kind of not one's better than the other. It's just like what works for you, you know. So here's some other issues. Do you think these are big issues or small issues to correct? Um, so we have the one on the top left, like the stair tread is broken. Yeah, I thought stair tread's broken. The one on the, underneath that, the stair tread is also broken and split in half. It's kind of uneven too. Yep. So those might be smaller things to have to replace, right? Kind of smaller issues that you needed to correct. Um, how about the one in the middle? What do you think of that? Well, they have railings, but there's no, I don't know, no backing. They look kind of high. Yeah, I think those are basement stairs. Basement, okay. Yeah. So, and really that one's not, that's just a really tiny issue to correct, because really the safety issue is what they've got on the steps. Like we could probably take this bottle of champagne and put that somewhere else, right? right? right. And that would make that actually really safe because there's two handrails, it looks good to go up and down. How about the rug on the top? It looks kind of wrinkled. You could um, slide. Yep. Yep, and I have over on the table. I have some rug tape. That if that if they just tape that down, that might be a really good easy way to fix that. Okay. And then how about the rug on the bottom right there? That's a rug. That's a rug. So it's as you're walking in from the hardwood floor into the the yeah. carpet. It's at, right at the threshold, and it, it looks it's all ra ragged. raw ragged. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that might be a bigger issue if you decide you need the whole carpet replaced or. You could put in a different threshold that just kind of covers that, which may actually maybe has beveled edges on both sides, so you, it's nothing that you to trip over. Or even if the car carpet guy could re just replace that mm -hmm. part. Okay. Here's some other issues. You have a closet light on the top that's got the pull cord that might present some balance problems. My favorite, every, every man's favorite chair, and I'm sorry to say that like that, but that's, I don't think... I know many women that have a chair that looks like that. Sorry <laughs> to the guy in the back. <laughs> um, that's kind of a problem. That chair, I'm guessing that person has back problems, maybe skin issues just because of the duct tape on bare skin. Um, there is no support really left in that chair. And yeah, we, yeah. I think we say enough about that. Uh, sticky windows, if you're trying to brick up your windows, that might be a you know, some causing pain in your back and your shoulders, you know, that might not be. As well as emergency access. If that's a bedroom window and you can't get that open, that might be an issue. Mm. 
What about the kitchen on the left? Is that easy to determine where cabinets start and stop? And it's kind of hard to see, even with the white chair. Like the white chair kind of blends that, in. Yeah, that white chair. I see that. The table must be nearby. But I think that's the wood that's grain that's right in the front of it. So yeah. that kitchen for someone who has some vision issues, that might not be. Yeah, it would be kind of. Yeah, hard. you might want to change up some colors on that or put some pictures up or something. Um, how about clawfoot tubs? They're tough to get in and out of. Very tough and kind of dangerous, right? right? right. Yeah. And then we have the toilet with the grab bars, which is a great idea. I tried to find another picture, but a lot of what happens a lot of time with grab bars is that see how the can is sitting there? Right. They become closet hanger, you know, clothes hangers as well as toiletry shelves. Mm. Totally defeating the purpose of what a grab bar would should right. be like. Well, right? I don't have the reflexes to grab a bar. Okay. So, so, so that would work in your case. <laughs> <laughs> but normally you wouldn't want to load up, because if you go to grab it and there's, you know, that beautiful bottle of perfume, that might not work so right, well. Right, right. Yeah, that's right. So here's some ideas. Um, I use these anti-slip tr stair treads at home. They work great. I have some just hardwood stairs that I just put those at the front. They're clear, so you can't even see them. Uh, those work really well. Um, some smaller ramps down on the side that if you need, if, you know, access over curbs and stuff. There, I think they're a little. They're not like ADA compliant. I think they're a little elevated, but that would be good if you're just trying to roll something over it to get it up where it would be a lift. Um, the light, uh, this was at one of my friend's houses that they were getting up during the night and they were having some falls because they were just missing that bathroom door, which is literally that door on the right, that open space on the right. And just by adding that light kind of defeated the, the fall problem. I don't know if you can see it really well. Uh, well, we have the ramp, so that was at my mother-in-law's house. My mother-in-law came home uh, in a wheelchair. We needed to figure out something quick to have her access the outside. So we just put that ramp up in her garage. Um, she was using the garage as a hair salon, so it wasn't used for cars anyway, so that was kind of a quick and easy fix for us. Wh to wh which one is that? The one with the stripes, the plywood. Up in the oh that one okay. went to the right oh, yeah okay. yep we added the grab bars on either side of the ramp and she was able to pull herself up and and mm. go down the ramp on her own really good. yeah yeah the one to the right of that that is uh that's a grab bar so that toilet where it was placed in the bathroom didn't have a wall near it and I have it so I have it right here too because that picture is kind of hard to see. I don't know, can you see the? So it goes floor to ceiling. It's just a tension rod. So and I do like the the S hook. I'm finding those are pretty. pretty right. People like those pretty well. Okay. Yes. Um, we have the light bulbs. They're actually clap on or knock on. Um, so if you're having diff if you have trouble clapping, you can knock on your uh, the nightstand or something and and turn in which actually for that I like that idea in the closet where we showed that light with the pull cord for the closet that might be a good option right. to use um, I actually just discovered this um, there's a person in fair that comes to Fairhaven that cuts porcelain tubs so if you're having difficulty getting in and out of the tub instead of a huge bathroom makeover you can they'll actually come and cut the porcelain tub and it works great they leave a little lip so the water doesn't come out and um, it's nice and smooth. You just put the curtain, just have to lower the curtain down a little bit. Um, oh, that's but yeah, cool. that works out really well. I showed this presentation to my aunt and uncle yesterday, and my uncle wanted me to put in doorknobs. That that was uh, something I had forgotten to mention. So Oh, doorknobs. Yeah, the long handle. So the easy access for the doorknobs. What he said, though, what he uses his doorknob, he said to make sure to tell people to put in heavy-duty doorknobs because a lot of times you're putting a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on the doorknob. He uses his, I didn't realize, but to lift himself up the steps. And, and oh, this is the doorknob? The doorknob? The, the doorknob door itself, yeah. It doesn't look like it's just a regular round one, but he says he puts in heavy-duty doorknobs so that they can take his weight 
of putting it and I did install a grab bar for him too so it's kind of a little less weight on the doorknob now a little more weight on the grab bar and the combination seems to work well for him. So before you start making home modifications you really want to take a look at the whole home and not just the immediate problem. Is it cost effective and feasible to stay in the home if more things start to go? Because as you know some if they're bigger home modifications and they're not being covered <laughs> under insurance things can get expensive. Um, you want to make plans if you're making home mod modifications for phase A, B, C, D, E, F, how many you think you need for as long as you want to stay in the home. Keep a beginner's mind and talk it out. And do you know what I mean by beginner's mind? No. Beginner's mind is when you're not the expert at anything. So you, you listen and you take the information and you think about it and see mm -hmm. if it works for you. Being the expert doesn't really help you because you don't you think you know it all and you shut it down and there's no there's no thinking going on about it. Right. You know, you, sometimes you got to think out of the box. So taking information in and seeing how it could work for you, maybe that doesn't work, but maybe this could work. That's something similar. Mm -hmm. Don't hang on to clutter. For example, my mother yes. when my mom passed I cleaned out her house for five days and I only got through the paperwork. My mother had never thrown anything away since high school. <laughs> oh, I had to, I I had to have an estate, estate people come in and all these things we, that we had kept for years and years, these wonderful antiques and stuff, I made $7,000 on the whole house. Wow. So I will tell you, it, it probably cost me more to get the stuff out than the stuff actually cost. Um, and then be honest with yourself. Know your limitations, know your expectations, and, and just try to figure it out. You know, if this, you know, if this is the way it has been forever, well, it doesn't really mean it's the way it always should be in the future. So just kind of be honest and look at things. So, so let's step back for a minute. Why do we need home modifications in the first place? Because we age and we aren't young and strong like we used to be. Okay. That's fine. So here are the four most probable reasons for home mm -hmm. modifications. Strength issues, like you said, medical issues, right? Safety worries, and sensory changes, okay? So let's start with number four, sensory changes. And in this, I'm just gonna talk about vision, hearing, uh, proprioception, and vestibular, mm -hmm. okay? Sensation changes slowing you down. How about vision? So keep up your, prescriptions up to date with an exam, caution you with progressive lenses and bifocals as they can change your depth perception and cause some balance problems. Hearing, get your yearly hearing test because you need to hear people approaching and if there are audible warnings like tooting on the horn or you know yeah. someone yelling out, if, if you can. I mean sometimes you, you know your hearing doesn't always yeah, you know, you're not always able to correct it. So let's talk about proprioception. Um, like you said, where you are in space. So this can be decreased with neuropathy if you have some issues with the, you know, you the feeling in your feet and stuff. Also, the receptors are located in your joints, so you want to protect your joints and keep up your joint health. So that just that's your proprioception. It just tells you where you are. Okay. Um, and then we have your vestibular system, which is in your inner ear, and that's the one that helps us with our equilibrium, keeping us upright. So in this, let me use my fancy pointer thing. See how there's the three loops right there? Right. You notice how one's vertical, one's horizontal, and one's diagonal? So there's fluid that runs through there, and it just that tells you where, which way you're shifting. In this little thing, the auto lift organs here, there's these little crystals called autoconia, and they swim around and there's a little, some little hair cilia in there that those crystals go around. Sometimes those crystals get stuck on the cilia, so when that fluid goes around, it kind of makes you dizzy because they're not doing what, you can't really tell which way you're up. So that's like if you go from sitting to stand, um, I'm sorry, laying down to sitting really quick, you might get a little woo. Yeah. That, that's, those, that's your vestibular system working. Mm -hmm. When those get stuck, what sometimes happens, there's a sign, it's called nystagmus. Your eyes actually do a little tick. So if that's happening, there's some problems. Those autoconia are probably hung up, and there is vestibular rehab. It's a couple um, not too difficult 
movements that we do in physical therapy mm -hmm. and it um, it kind of dislodges those and it's only usually a couple treatments and you're, it kind of corrects that pretty quickly mm -hmm. if that's what it is okay and again the symptom with, with if you're having that is you, you're dizzy with position changes so laying down to sitting up sitting up to standing those kind of things mm -hmm. okay or if you like if you turn really quick if yes. that fluid can't is telling it whoa we're doing something but the the crystals don't know what you're really doing because they're stuck so consider with all these uh, sensory changes going on uh, contrast to paint colors to pick out areas with ease you know like with that white kitchen maybe if they had put different colored doors or a different backsplash you could see where the you know things were a different color chair so you didn't run into the chair um, bed rail or chair rails to give you support during position changes you know going down from lying down to sitting sitting to standing just something that can kind of steady yourself signage or special lighting in home if uh, you're having hearing problems they have doorbells that they'll a light will blink so you know somebody's ringing the doorbell wow. if you can't hear it or the phones the phones light up too uh, use of assistive devices to assist you with balance all right so moving on to number three safety worries again for how we are having safety worries with and that's why we're looking at home modifications if you're having difficulty with balance memory dizziness blood pressure joint pain mobility ADLs, which are activities of daily living, like bathing, dressing, those things. Memory. It can cause and yeah, memory. It can cause safety concerns with stairs, stoves, room setup, the type of mattress you have, furniture heights, tub toilet heights, and pets. Okay. So to improve safety, think easy to access, and I'm not meaning I want it easy on you, but that it's you can access it pretty easily without a lot of difficulty. Mm -hmm. Good lighting, body mechanics, fall prevention, emergency access or evacuation. Here's some safety tips for some home modifications. Remove throw rugs or secure to floor like we talked about. Remove the clutter to clear for clear pathways, not only for safety, but it makes you feel better if things aren't so cluttered. Have handrails on both sides of the stairs. Install night lights along ropes from bed to bathroom. Uh, install grab bars by toilet and shower. Use a tr shower seat and handheld shower head if you're having t trouble with standing in, in, the, in the tub or shower. So number two, medical issues. So to prevent some of that from happening, you want to visit your doctors regularly at least once a year. Keep all doctors informed of all medications and supplements. Supplements are also chemicals and react in your body. So I hear a lot of times with my patients, oh yeah, I'm just taking, you know, like, I don't even know, charcoal or something. And, and, and you kind of like, yeah, but that react might react with X, Y, and Z. So mm -hmm. I actually had to have a friend of mine who was a pharmacist come talk to my mother-in-law to, to tell her that supplements can interact with other medications. They're not just, oh, it's only a supplement kind of thing, mm. so. Um, have your hearing, vision, and other screenings performed annually or as indicated by your physician. Report dizziness or loss of function immediately. It is not a normal thing if it's a change. Keep your medication current and organized, and you can see that is a, a med planner. Uh, the company I work with uh, doing the physical therapy, we do actually hand those out for people because we feel like it's a, such an important thing to keep your medications organized and, and then you, you know, and up to date. Okay. Uh, so, and it's also important too that you have you, what medications you're on checked every year because if you're starting to have some balance problems or dizziness that could be caused from the medications and not so much a medical issue. Uh, so if you have medical issues, lung issues, heart problems, edema, lymphedema, diabetes, chronic pain, etc., 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 unless your condition is very severe and or your physician has told you not to exercise, exercise is a means to counteract the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's my plug for physical therapy. <laughs> exercise, exercise. So consider um, your effort and mobility in getting tasks done. If things are getting really difficult, you may want to look into some home modifications to see what might make that a little more accessible and 
um, not where it's above being a, a moderate difficulty to do. Mm -hmm. uh, safety with assistive devices and equipment, access to your seats in your home. If you're having some breathing issues or endurance issues, maybe adding that extra seat in the middle of a long hallway where you mm -hmm. could actually take a rest for a second and then mm -hmm. continue instead of being completely out of breath or having bad balance by the time you get there because you're so taxed might be an issue, might be a good way to do it. Um, level of difficulty getting up and out of chairs, bed, couch, and or toilet, and do the heights need to be raised or lowered? It could be either. Safety if oxygen tubing is needed. Where does the tubing run? Kind of got to think about that if it's going to be a tripping hazard or mm -hmm. it's always kind of a challenge of how to how to figure out tubing. Protection from pressure injuries, skin tears, or wounds. If you're sitting a lot, you don't want to be sitting a lot. Um, have a really good cushion underneath you, um, but that's still, you know, if you're keeping yourself in that per same spot for a long time, you got to keep moving. And edema control and management. So, at, like, thinking about back to that recliner that we looked at that had the duct tape, that probably wouldn't, if that person had edema, um, that would you know, putting a pillow over that would be a really good idea just to uh, keep them elevated and up and off the duct tape and so it didn't um, cause any other issues. And then here we come to the most probable reason which is a strength issue, why we do home modifications. So strategy number two, get those blue suede shoes moving which I love that picture. <laughs> I want to get out and dance, I like the dance floor too. <laughs> So why get physical? It improves our health, it, decrease, it increases our strength, excuse me, and it decreases our need for home modifications it, to encourage in the community, which you're doing since you're here at the Fairhaven Council on Aging. Mm -hmm. uh, keeps you independent, and our mantra is if you don't use it, you lose it, which is such the case. That's right. So, I thought this was interesting. I wanted to talk about this a little. Just if you look at the head posture on the person in the middle here, see yes. how his see how his head starts going forward, right, and then progressive and progressive, and yeah, then we're getting here. Probably we got osteoporosis from the spot. Maybe. Yes, but which came first? So your head is eight to twelve pounds. Okay, mm -hmm. if it starts to come forward in your body. My that mind. is a lot of weight that now your neck and your back are trying to hold forward. Yeah. It needs, when it's up straight and you have good posture, it just, the weight of your head is just carried by the, the strength of your body in a good position. Mm -hmm. But when you start to go forward, all those smaller muscles in your back, neck, shoulders, all those start to now work harder. So it's a not to, um, surprising when people have neck and back pain because their their head posture is here so when you're sitting just always make sure shoulders back heads up yep everybody's readjusting themselves yeah. <laughs> so recommended dose of dose of exercise to keep up your mobility is 50 hours of exercise in three to five months that's about 20 to 30 minutes a day a brilliant person i just talked to not too long ago brought up the fact that Whoever said we have to do 20 to 30 minutes a day all at once? You break it up if you have Because to. if you wait for that 20 to 30 minutes and you don't do it, what good is that? Okay? I will encourage people, getting up, going to the bathroom, and coming back, that probably isn't to count. In, it is good for moving and getting up, but I don't know if we want to count that in as exercise because your body becomes accustomed to that route. Yeah. Unless you decide to go to the bathroom and then do two more laps after, that would be great. And um, activity exercise guidance, exercise safely and with physician clearance. You want to exercise in a moderate range, not easy, not hard. That no pain, no gain, forget about the no gain. It's just no pain. Exercise in a no pain or a pain-free range of motion. Yeah, that's what they told me at the polio clinic. When yep. you have pain, you have to stop. Yep, listen to your body. Know your limitations, pace yourself, and progress slowly. Check your heart rate and blood pressure. Hi make sure to always hydrate. And if you don't know, ask. If there's something that, should I do this? You gotta ask. Just ask a physician, ask a therapist, ask a personal trainer, whoever it is. 
Always remember, protect your joints, use proper body mechanics, um, and how to increase your endurance, you would do it by distance. Your strength, you would do it by how many and how heavy. Flexibility by stretching, balance by challenging your system, and be careful with that because if you challenge it, you might want to have a spotter or someone nearby that might just be able, you know, that you could, in case it was a little, a little too challenging that somebody could be there to support you. And always remember to have fun, right? Yeah, yeah. Here's some exercise ideas, and the, the main goal is to be stay active and not stagnant. Perform your activities of your daily living, household chores, walking, strength and balance training, uh, flexibility and stretching, aerobic exercise. Also, you might want to take part in fall risk assessments to see like what your strengths and weaknesses might be. Um, and always think individual or group activities like whatever kind of makes you happy. I really like this Otago exercise program. I put it in here. Um, this is out of, I believe it's New Zealand, but it might be the UK. I can't quite find their address to confirm that. But it's something I learned um, when I went through my fall prevention certification. These are great exercises, super easy. They talk about doing them while you're making your coffee and stuff like that. So um, if you want more information about that after, just come up and ask me. Chores, love them or leave them. Leave them if they're, you're unbalanced, if it's dangerous, if it causes pain or makes you at risk, and if it's scary. Probably not a good idea if it's scary. Love them if it keeps you moving, you're less sedentary, keeps up your strength, it helps others, it's safe, and it's your job. So strategy number three, fall prevention. What is a fall? A fall is an unintentional coming to rest on the ground floor or other lower level, but not as a result of an overwhelming external force, says the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. My husband, I bring up falls, he said, it's not the fall that hurts, it's all the sudden stop. So that's what his... Strong wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that would be an external force, so I guess that's something pushing... <laughs> Falls are not a normal part of aging. They are not a normal part of aging. Um, Dr. Atul Gawande in his book Being Mortal says falls are a harbinger of things to come. So if you're starting to have falls, please go get things checked out and always tell your doctor when you have a fall just because it might be a medication issue or something else going on. And if you don't know, a harbinger is a person or thing that announces the signal of something to, that's approaching. I'm not going to get into all these false uh, statistics, but I think it's interesting that $50 billion was spent in 2015 on falls. That's a lot of, lot of moolah. Right. And not all falls are reported, so it could have been higher than that. Scary statistic. Fall death rates in the U.S. increased 30% from 2007 to 2016 as our longevity is getting longer and longer. Um, they're saying that in two, 2030, there's gonna be seven falls, yeah, seven right. fall deaths every hour. Wow. It is my goal and physical therapy's goal to not have that happen. So that's why we're out talking about fall prevention. Serious complications from falls, as you can imagine, not, not great things. Rhabdomyolysis, I just, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I just want to point out that is when you when you're fallen and people don't move and get off the floor or, or they're on a hard surface. It's actually a breakdown of your muscle, and it's a big a big problem. Not an easy rehab from that, and a lot of medical attention needed. Um, so the big thing is try not to if you fall, try not to stay in place. Even if you can't get up, try to move, keep moving, change sides. Find, pull a couch cushion off and sit on a couch. Decreased mobility leads to fear of falling, so make sure that you're moving safely so you don't stop moving. Um, just some co common causes of falls, there's internal factors like just age, poor vision, those kind of things. External factors, uh, medication, pets, I want to, so check out the cat on the, the rug. What if it's a black cat? Oh yeah, you can't that see. That would be a big problem, right? Mm -hmm. So break the cycle, the fear of falling, you start with a sedentary lifestyle, decreases your social ac engagements and activities, it increases your need for assistance in ADLs, and on and on and on it goes. So break, break the cycle.
keep moving. So what happens if you fall? Uh, breathe and don't panic. Don't panic is number one. You gotta stop, just breathe and check it out. Don't let anybody pick you up until you assess your body and the situation. Obviously, if it's a dangerous situation, if you know, and Sonny's trying to move you, yes, get out of the dangerous situation first. That's, you know. Yeah. Um, call for help 911. Don't forget to push your life alert if you have the button on you. If you have the necklace or the bracelet, make sure you push the button. A lot of people forget that. Um, I think Muriel said how she keeps her cell phone nearby, that's a good idea. And then, like you did at the pool, try to get off the ground. Look around and see what you can use yeah, around you. Yeah, I have my you. cell phone too. Yeah, that's good, yep. Call your doctor, let them know that you had the fall, um, and they'll determine if you should come in or not. Okay. Strategy number four, make a plan. These are all kinds of things that you could use, or, you know, sometimes the large families, you know, is it good or is it bad? Kind of depends on the family, neighbors, but transportation, all those things, make a list of things you need to do. I, I do that. Know I your guess. abilities. Yeah, good. Know your abilities. Ask for help when or before you need it. Family, friends, neighbors, whoever's out there that'll help. Create a who to call for what list so that if something does happen to you and you have services coming in, everybody knows who's on board so it's not a mad scramble to figure out who's going to do things. Types of examples of resources, you have transportation, groceries, medication help, showers, uh, lifeline, like the personal emergency response systems, we call them um, meal delivery and much more. And if you're unsure, the Council on Aging is a great resource to tell you what's out there. Here's just some numbers. If you need those, let me know. We can jot them down later. It's, and it's better to have a plan you don't use than no plan when you need one because someone else may do the planning for you. I'm not sure I trust that guy to do my planning, but he could be a good guy. I don't know. If modifications, exercise, and community resources are not the answer, you have other options available. Over 55 communities live with family, friends, independent living, assisted living, continuum care where you may ha own a home but then they have step down units, um, independent living, assisted living and so on uh, for whatever your needs may be. Nursing home, a granny pod or even a live in person. So looking forward, get ready for the new world order. We now have age wave coming. There are now more people over the age of 60 than there are under 14. So our world dynamics are going to have to change. Accessibility is going to be a big thing. Adults, senior adults now are more knowledgeable, educated, and healthier than they were even a decade ago. So how we do things really needs to change in order to accommodate. Imagine some changes in new ways homes will be built, grab bars everywhere, less basements or increased access to basements, built-in seats at kitchen counters, uh, improved medication and hopefully eradication of Alzheimer's, different ways to treat dementia, improved di medical diagnostics. Market strategies will be different. These will, might be you know, selling more towards the older population than um, the younger generation. Styles of clothing will be different. We already have the Nike sneakers that was inspired by a boy with cerebral palsy that you can stuff your foot in, push it down, and the heel comes up. So you don't have to worry about if you don't have the strength to put your heel in or pull it up or a capability of bending over like that. Um, there's the study of our DNA, uh, DNA called genomics, which is going to start telling us what types of diseases we are prone to. Uh, what type of diets are best for us, and uh, markers for our longevity. Who is starting this world change? You, you are. And Uncle Sam wants you. <laughs> One person can make change happen. I don't know if you're familiar with the starfish story, but the little boy throwing the starfish into the sea and saying it made a difference to that one is kind of where we're here right now. Public programs need get more funding in a lot of cases where, where there is a need to be met. So if people need things you need to ask, especially with the Council on Aging, the more people that partake in programs, the, they get more funding to have those programs. So make sure you don't hesitate to make your needs known. 
So to recap, um, we're going to perform home modification check to determine, I'm sorry, a home safety check to determine home modifications. I have that um, home safety checklist over on the table over here if you want to take one home. Sure. Think accessibility, safety, long term, and happiness. Ask for help and don't get buried in clutter. Keep moving. Mobility is crucial to life and independence. And always remember to have your doctor's approval before you start an exercise program. Know your abilities and make a plan. I can't stress this enough. Ask for help when or before you need it. And if you're again, if you're unsure what resources are out there, ask the Council on Aging. So thanks so much for joining me today.